Yes, welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 133, and you are with a few hosts today, one of them being myself, the other being Joey. Joey, I've got to come up with a nickname for you, Joey. Mega Man. Joey the Mega Man. <laughs> so Joey's here with us. Um, I'm your high priest of Ray, and we have also rounding off the table tonight. We have Rick, the Rick Ball special. Rick, welcome, welcome. Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Jeez, Rick, you changed your voice there. You threw me a little. Yeah, <laughs> oh, a couple. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, Looney's welcome to yet another show. We are doing something um, which pops up every now and again. We are doing our Avatars of Vengeance. It is a gaming review, and I could not do this show without some utter experts in Joey and in Rick. So um, as you can see, patrons can see Joey shaking his head in agreement. Mm-hmm. He absolutely That's what that meant. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, can't wait to get into it. We are doing a gaming re- review, and we are doing something a little bit different. It is the contest of champions. That um, how do you describe it, Joey uh, or Rick? Is a smart tablet device game? What do you call it? Tap to win. That's how I describe it. Yeah, Tap basically. To win. Yeah. Okay. Is that the official name, or is that kind of like a tongue in cheek no, kind of? It's tongue in cheek. I don't mean it pejoratively, but it could be taken that way. Okay. Okay. Take it as you um, will. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, because I don't know, I know we have a lot of fans uh, of this game, which is cool. We'll get to the feedback at the end. I was very happy to hear from a couple of loonies, a big shout out to those guys. Um, but yeah, we're going to go through this game, our own experiences playing with it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, possibly comparing it with traditional games or games that you're used to playing. Um, sorry. And, sorry? What was that, Rick? Sorry. Oh, no worries. No apologies needed here. We're all embracing. Um, just don't do it again. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> <I'm joking>. <laughs> anyway um, yeah, Rick. Uh, we, we're going to compare this like, with with games. Are you guys? You guys basically play, um, you know, a fair few games. Uh, people that have heard Joey before know that he's um, well versed in that arena. Um, Rick as well, uh, you you do love to dabble with the console. Um, let's just open the let's just open the the floor now. Favorite games then? I'll start with Rick. Rick, if if you had a choice to to play something straight away, you know, if you had a free day, what would you slap on? Could you say that again? <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you had um, if you had a free day. To play any video game, what what's your favorite? What's um what's on high rotation at the moment? Oh shit! Um, let's see. Currently, I'm playing Teppen. Mhm. Teppen. Uh, since Marvel vs. Capcom 2 got announced for Evo 2020, I'm replaying that, getting the groove back. Oh, nice. Nice. What's Teppen? Joe, oh, do you know Teppen? Uh, I'm not familiar with it, but I've never, yeah. obviously never played it. All right. Isn't it like a card? Uh, it's like a card game? Is it's that... a card game with Capcom characters. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's right. I don't know how the actual gameplay is, though. Like, I don't know the, like a man. the specifics. Mm. Cool. Uh, and a Marvel versus Capcom, you were saying that? That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Two's a classic, man. I am so bad at that game because the team that I want to use just kind of sucks, and I'm not good enough. And uh, like, I can't do infinites in that game, and I just that makes me lose. Like, when I started I, playing again. I feel like <laughs> what was that? So sorry? much I forgot. The... Hello? Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, since replaying that game, I've forgotten so many stuff. So I'm basically playing like a novice. Oh, right. That's what happens, man. If you step away from Marvel for like two days, you're a casual again. <laughs> yeah, <the> basically. <laughs> yeah. And 
Uh, and Joey, how about you? Like, so I, I we know we've covered before previously some games that um are to your liking, but currently now, anything on high rotation? Yeah, um, I actually just finished playing through all the from software games again because I I just uh, played Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice, and I slept Ooh. on that for like eight months, and then I finally just started it, and then I got the platinum for that, and then I went back through from Sauce category with your uh, catalog, which I've beaten a couple times, but went through all those, and then I started playing Blasphemous, which was okay, and then now I'm back to Stardew Valley, because that's who I am <laughs> as a person. Bloody so, stuff. Are you, are you, oh, you know that, Rick, as well? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I decided that I wanted to get the Platinum Trophy for that on PS4, because it has like 0.2% because of this stupid mini game on it that's absurdly hard. So I was like, okay, whatever. It's not just a baby game. It's fine. And I just <laughs> love that game so much. The soundtrack is phenomenal. So it's the, if you're just ever some... just like willing to listen to a game soundtrack, just put that on and float. That's all you need. <laughs> Is it something that you? Is this a game that you've done? Have you completed before, Joe? And you're just revisiting again because it's so good. Yeah, um, it's yeah. it's a little bit open ended. You know, it's not really what I would really call like a linear game. I guess there's like a linear progression in it to some extent, but yeah. it's a little bit more open ended. It's sort of like Harvest Moon if you ever like Harvest Moon meets some I don't know Terraria elements if that makes any sense. It's like a farming simulator plus dungeon simulator plus like life sim. It sounds mm -hmm. awful, but it's really good. I don't know. I like it. Think it, of it like I'm farming wondering. Diablo. Yeah, farming Diablo. Yeah, <laughs> but that is what Diablo is as well. So, but like actual farming, like colloquial oh. farming, I guess. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I mean, I've heard of Diablo. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm very much a, a novice, uh, if not, not even present in you know, in the school of computer gaming. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, you get the pass. Um, I'm tr I'm a I'm a truant. Um, but anyway, no, it sounds sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Um, uh, look, before we get into what we're gonna discuss here, loonies, which is the the contest of champions. I just want to take this opportunity, Rick, actually, to, to catch up with you. have recently went to Japan, yeah? And um, any good stories there? Any good purchases? Any good Moon Knight oh, purchases? No. Or... It's all terrible. None. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. It was amazing. <laughs> Great. Awesome. Yeah, um, I, I know you were. Um, you went to some stores, um, comic stores. Oh, yeah, I went Toy to stores. some of the manga stores. Found mm -hmm. some comic books, which were interesting. <laughs> Well, how so? Let's just, let's just say it's like the smallest little uh, section I've ever seen. Oh, nice. it's like just like one little bookcase. <laughs> oh wow! And what? Just Batman and Spider Man? Oh no, it's just Avengers stuff. Uh, okay. I think it's mainly the mainly the main things I saw were Dark Avengers, Brian Michael Bendis's New Avengers, and Secret Invasion. Oh. Pretty old, old stuff. Yeah. yeah. Apparently the Japanese yeah. like Bendis. <laughs> 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 who knew? But who knew? <laughs> That's, uh, oh, That's so that sad. Is. Dude, I was in Hawaii, like, uh, or in like the Big Island, I want to say about seven months ago. And I was mm -hmm. so stoked to check out comic shops there and was just completely underwhelmed. There's one single one, and I believe it was Hilo. And I had been looking forward to it my entire trip. And it was this little mall store with like super overpriced stuff, no real back issues. It, every single thing in there was bagged, which was really weird, which put wow. a premium on everything. But it was even like brand new stuff, like all the brand new stuff was. And it just like, it was so sad. And like everything was just white because of all the white cardboard stuff. It's yeah. kind of lifeless. Jeez. And I hurt that hurt my feelings, but I'm sure people on like who live in Hawaii who maybe may or may not listen to this are like, dude, you just didn't go to the right places. But I swear <laughs> to God, I looked for so many things. It was so hard to find a good comic yeah. shop there. So I feel you, Rick. Well, I remember um, Dave from, uh, shout out to Dave from Signal of Doom. He was telling me about his trip to Hawaii and he went to two comic book stores 
Uh, one of them he said was uh, was was decent. It was okay. Um, good customer service. The other one he said was terrible. He's saying the the customer service, the person wasn't interested. Um, kind of roll their eyes at him when he was asking for stuff. Mm. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean. Hawaii is obviously bigger than just two stores, but I wonder if one of them yeah. was the store you went to. Maybe. Um, well, again, I was on Big Island, and this was in, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure it was on Hilo, in Hilo, rather. And yeah, so maybe mm. maybe that's one. I don't know. Hawaii is mm. pretty big. But contrarily, <laughs> I, I went to Arizona, I want to say like two weeks after that, and I had an amazing mm-hmm. experience. I went to like three different shops, oh. all of them were great. So, yes. Yeah. Luck of the draw, man. Shout out to Arizona. Props, Arizona. <laughs> good old Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> good old Arizona and good old Japan. Yeah. Um, who know their quirky style, their quirky culture. Locking Bendis, that's just crazy. I don't know. What's I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Something um, to be said. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, let's get cracking, guys. Um, we have just a bit to cover here. Um, we're going to go through, as mentioned, we're going through Contest of Champions. I thought we'd keep the format similar to jo- Joey to what we did last time. So I'm just going to shout out the aspects. We're going to go through, we don't have to go totally in depth into them, but um, we're looking at graphics, sound mu- or music, controls, gameplay, story, length, difficulty, replay value, originality. I'll put in here how it compares to other fighting games. And uh, and personal enjoyment, and we're going to cap that off with our um our ratings. Now I have played this myself. The only disappointment I'll get it out there straight away is that I still to this day have not acquired Moon Knight in it, um, which is you know unfortunate. Um, but uh, I, I, you know I'm prepared to give it a good rating. Um, so we'll see how we go. Now first off, I guess overall impressions. I'll throw it to to Rick first. Okay, so um. Without getting into too much detail, what's your overall impression for for Contest of Champions? I think it's fine. It's just one of those games where once in every few months I will play it. But after that, I'll forget about it and play other games. Fantastic, fantastic. That's a, that's a great review there, Rick. I hope we um we can <laughs> send that into Contest yeah, of Champions. Yeah. As a, as, no, no. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's a nice, honest review. Um, that's good. And it makes sense. I can see where you're, totally you're coming from. Um, Joey, yourself, is this something that you like play for a little bit and then just forget about and maybe pick up later on? Or He's pretty right. I mean, yeah. okay, I got to be honest with you. I, I haven't put a lot of time into this game. I can't really give you anywhere near the in-depth analysis I gave you of uh, mm-hmm. Ultimate Alliance 3. But I'll, mm-hmm. I'll say that before Ultimate Alliance 3 came out, around the time that I actually started getting into Moon Knight, um, I started just kind of, re- you know, I guess rekindling my Marvel Universe interest, right? So I was downloading mm-hmm. a couple games in prep for Ultimate Alliance, and I saw a contest of champions, and it, like I was like, oh, cool! I haven't played a Marvel game in a while. Let me get my fix, mm-hmm. you know. And um, everything just—I don't know. It, it, the actual gameplay of it is kind of nothing. It's more yeah. of an RPG than a fighter for sure. But it's just like a tap. Yeah, I mean, there is an element of skill, but like every other mobile game, it's such a like a low ceiling that it's more about prepping your character or yes. your team rather than it is about fighting. And I think that's fine in a way because I, no one wants to play an f- actual fighting game on a smartphone. You know, there are people who... <laughs> well, like, <laughs> but with, like, a stick or a controller, yeah, sure. But just, yeah. like, tap spamming, I just... I, maybe there is something to that. I'm sure that the... I guess the, the right game hasn't come out for that. But if, to me, it was just really hard to get into because... It was so shallow, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was, I had some fun beating the crap out of stuff. Like that was cool, mm-hmm. and like flawless yeah. and things. I felt good, but then like it, the difficulty ramps up, like every other mobile game, and you yeah. either draw or you build your team perfectly from what you get, and yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. It's- yeah, look, I think I'm going to bounce between these aspects because I think you've touched upon something there, Joey. And, and Rick, I'd love to hear what you say as well. It's it's always, um, this thing always crops up with mobile games, right? And I think we, we could probably just put it under, actually, it's probably not under, they're probably under, under value. Uh, and you mentioned it's a low ceiling, Joey. You mentioned that um, it's all about prepping. 
a lot of mobile games, if not all of them, um, are kind of prepping you, aren't they, to to buy more? The whole thing is actually just to spend, 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 right? To to either um, buy more gold or whatever or tokens. Um, how do you find that, like, as a... Because I guess with your traditional games, you do buy the game, right? So you, you spend up front, you know, where this mobile game, you buy little bits here and there. Um, is this something that puts you off or is it something that is, it's a different style of, of, of kind of commerce for, for the gameplay? Um, any thoughts, uh, Rick, on it? Are you annoyed by this, that, that you're only limited to a certain, a certain aspect to it because you have to buy something actually to further the game? See, I don't have that problem. Mm-hmm. Usually when games do like that, sometimes they'll have a really good uh, paywall accessibility. Like, for example, in the game Teppen, mm-hmm. not, you're not asked to buy anything. You just play the game, level up, get points, get free tickets. Just keep on doing that. If you want to buy stuff, mm-hmm. you're not pushed into it. Okay. This is, this is a mobile game, is it? This is a mobile game, yeah. Recently came out a few months ago. The thing with the thing with Contest of Champions, though, mm-hmm. sometimes they'll they'll silently like push you to the mm-hmm. direction of the marketplace. Yeah, here and there, sometimes. Like when you beat something, I or think you lose, the best way to do a mobile that. game is yeah. to not encourage it, but if you need to, it's always there. Mm. Right. Yeah. Sorry. What was that, Joey? As well. Yeah. Like, like he was saying, it'll push you to buy stuff. Like, if you lose mm. a match, or if you're you run out of stamina, you know, mm. it, it it gives you a notice. Like, oh, you can buy this for X amount of money. Yes. And yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, which I think is fine as long as the game is playable without spending any money. And that's yeah. always the dilemma with these games. I, th- I feel. Yeah. I mean, t- to be honest, I- I'm a little put off by it. I mean, today I just mentioned to you, Joey, earlier, I-, I had a little play on it myself, and after completing a round, it then asks you, or I think I was opening some crystals, and it, it asks you again, like, twice, you know, do you want to buy more, or, you know, do you want to mm-hmm. upgrade? And it's like, no, 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 I'll close, I'll get out of it. And then it, kept, it did it again, and I find that a little intrusive to the game, you know, to the game, because um, I'd like it to be a lot more silent, as you mentioned, Rick, as well, but I've I feel this is just my opinion that uh, it is always present. It's always it's always kind of there. And and second to your point as well, Joey, um, um, it, it it just takes a lot longer to actually progress if you don't buy stuff. You know what I mean? I, so I think there's that. I think that's that silent thing is just saying, Rick. I mean, if you don't do anything, if you just try to play the whole thing for free, you're not going to get your Moon Knight or or, or whatever. You know, you, you're just going to have to be uh, left to playing hours and hours and hours trying to upgrade and progress your stuff whereas you can kind of shortcut that if you just buy stuff so i guess the incentive to buy is um is trying to is testing your patience i guess well there are events that give free characters and free items and whatever away for free uh because i guess that's what free means (laughs) uh (laughs) there was one with moon knight i don't know a couple months ago apparently i missed it Okay. Uh, but so th- the game does give you some free, free things. And the thing is, even if you get Moon Knight, you may get like a low level Moon Knight. And so you yeah. can't really make him stacked or really use him in your team for a while if you do draw him. So yes. it's always that's the issue with mobile games, too, is like the draw. So yeah. the best way to play these games is to not look for a specific thing because that thing may either be disappointing or difficult to get. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is the case with me. Like I, I drew, I think it was Venom, and Venom was like super good for where I was in the game. Mm-hmm. And I, and then I started getting more characters and progressing, and the other characters fell off. Sort of, they were all like around the same level, but Venom was really the only one who stuck it out. And I, mm. I didn't get to the point where I felt like I had to buy stuff yet. I'm sure that exists. I'm sure there's an end game and a competitive yeah. aspect where you need to min-max your team and blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. I didn't get to that yet. So that's what's difficult. I can't really fully speak yes, to the sure. end game of that. And, and it's difficult to talk about a mobile game until you get there, I feel. Cause... 
yeah, yeah. Uh, you and me both as well I, I'm, I'm totally in, in your boat as well so I mean I can't speak too much for it I mean we've got as mentioned we've got some feedback from from some loonies who appear to have played the game quite thoroughly as well and um, it's great to see um, they they probably know way more than, <laughs> than what we're we're, uh, we're talking about now but um, we're gonna give it our best shot as well look uh, also I'm just you mentioned as well Joey um, about the the tapping and so just just to go on to the controls um, is there a way then is there something Joey that you can think without having to incorporate a um, like a joystick with a touch screen device um, to create controls that are challenging enough to actually make it a decent fighting or RPG game? So to be honest, I think this game does a good job of mm -hmm. a very basic understanding of it because it's like you have your tap and then like your double tap or whatever, and then you yep. move your character or dodge. Yeah, And I think yep. that's a good foundation. It just needs to be smoother. The problem yeah. is again. I mean, you can't really make a like if you make okay. If you took <laughs> someone's going to take this statement and just immediately throw it on its head, but you can't take uh -huh. the gameplay of Street Fighter Five and make it a free to play game, even though it kind of is. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you can't take that exact model and put it into a mobile game because the gameplay is completely designed around a console and a controller and so many different things. Mm -hmm. Even though yeah. Street Fighter does kind of follow that model of like here's some free characters and then you could buy more and there's a lot of paid DLC and all that kind of stuff. It's similar to a mobile game. Uh, yeah. But the problem is, is that it's just, you're looking at something built from the ground up with that model in mind, you know? And mm -hmm. I think the only way to do that was, is to, your controls have to follow that basically. They, they have to be really simple. They have to have, Something like that anyone could figure out right away. There's not really a mm -hmm. there's like maybe a little bit of uh, mastery there, but there's not yeah. a lot of complexity. And in, even then, it just even with like the dodging, sometimes it felt unresponsive. So yeah. like I would yeah. like you could sometimes cancel out of stuff, but sometimes not. And then sometimes they would like almost buffer your tap. And so I, I, oh. over times I would find myself like jumping back twice and then getting hit by an attack. So. Yeah. Yeah, There's okay, almost like okay. a rocker, rock, rocker, rocker, piper, scissors. There's like a rock, <laughs> paper, scissors, Rochambeau mm -hmm. element. I just always want to yeah. say Rochambeau uh, element. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, I don't know, Rick, what, what are your thoughts? Do you agree on this? Is, is there a way that, um, is there a, an inclination for a bit more complexity in the controls to actually give you a challenge to master them? Um, or are you finding something similar to Joey? where um, the, the current controls aren't really responsive and that, that can kind of cause problems with the gameplay? I think Joey hit it on the, hit it on the head. Controls are fine. Well, Sorry, Rick, you were cutting out there. What, what was that, sorry? Functions, it's weird. Was, sorry, what was that, Rick? You, you just cut out there. Oh, I said... Oh, sorry. I just said uh, Joey's right. Sometimes you'll do... You'll swipe, you'll... Differently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Sorry. They're a little bit more cut out there. Um, Rick's you're connection something. are like the controls in this game, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes He's there's a bit of lag. To, to, yeah. To yeah. That. Yeah. Rick Ball, you might be in the game. Just uh, be careful. Um, yeah. Okay. So you are basically you're saying that um, yeah, that there's no response. Sometimes it's not responsive to to the swipes. Um, do, do you guys both have covers on your on your screen, like protective screen? Does is that what's hindering it? I mean, I tried I... without and with it, to be honest, yeah, okay. just to be safe, and it didn't really yeah. make a difference. It's just the way okay. the game is designed and like the speed okay. of the game. Um, yeah. like the the, the f you have like a certain amount of time to input stuff in it, and so it's yep. not really clear when the game designates that time. So uh -huh. it, what it'll do is it'll like buffer your input. So. Yeah. And a lot of that is just due to the game too, like how it's designed and the graphic yeah. fidelity and all that. But either way, what yeah. happens is, um, like, let's say you want to block something, right? And you're yeah. spamming the block m motion to block. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the game yeah. isn't actually reading your input yet, but when the window opens for it to do that, you're tapping and spamming because you're not sure when it's going to happen. And then mm. it goes off twice or it doesn't go off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't happen a lot. I'm sure. Okay, so I know that a lot of like end game players of mobile games like this 
won't mm-hmm. play it on their phones, although use some kind of interface. So that remains to be said. Like I, people stream this game from their computers because they use like an Android or iOS client, I believe. Oh. So um, maybe they use the phone as a controller, but for the most part, yeah. I they think watch it on somewhere else. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that that might be a, a big part of it too. And I don't know if it has okay. controller support. And even if it did, I don't know how well that would work because the control yeah. is simple by nature. So, yeah, I mean, I think in essence, it is it is quite quite simple. Um, Rick, any other final thoughts on controls before? Um, um no, I think it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, I wanted to go on to like the graphics actually now because um, and, and get your thoughts on it. I mean, obviously, there's a distinct difference between. Uh, the fluidity of of it compared to say your your games on the consoles. Um, I'm, I found it when I first started playing, like years ago, when it kind of first came out. I was quite um, impressed by the graphics. Uh, you know, they've got the the characters all have a a very comic booky, cartoony feel to them. Um, they seemed fluid enough for me. The thing that got me though was uh, you can tell there were specific models. Um, for each character, whether it's a strong guy or yeah, a, just a female reuse. character, and just yeah. reuse um, mm-hmm. just different skin. Um, so it's kind of, oh, there's Colossus. Oh, yeah, he's kind of, he's moving the same way as, as He's uh, also Drax. a juggernaut and Drax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, that happens a lot, so, though, with fighting games, to, but it is very apparent here, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But what do you think of, um, say, Rick, so what, what do you think of the graphics overall? Uh, quite, quite happy with them? Could they be improved in any way, in particular? I think they're fine. I think there's some that I don't like, but then you get some like Dark Hawk, which look amazing for some reason. Mm. They look I really seen good. Dark Hawk, right? Oh, he's in the game. He looks really good. Okay, nice. Yeah, they keep on adding, which is a good thing. They keep on adding more and more characters, the the endless characters in the Marvel universe. I, I mean, yeah. I just up, upgraded mine, and there's Longshot in there now, and Mojo, and and they they always have their little. Like big events, um, Joey graphics to you. How do they stack up? I think they look really good for a mobile game. I didn't realize this mm. was so old though. I thought it came out like a year and a half ago. So oh no, I guess I'm very it's ignorant. Fine. But yeah, no, I think they look fine. I, I think if you're mm. talking about aesthetic, you you hit the nail on the head as well with a lot of borrowed models or like mm. just base models. Uh, and yeah, I, I don't know though. I think for like they do look kind of interesting enough. Like each character despite having the same body type does look mm. a little like it does look unique enough. And there's a ton yep. of characters and a ton of variations too. So yep. there is no feasible way that I think they could have added 8 million different skins. And also Absolutely. remember it's a mobile game. You can't have 45 gigs of space. Mm. You know? mm. And this yeah, game, like right. it, it does download a lot of extra stuff, but for the yep. most part, it stays pretty slim for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I was about to say. Yeah. That. That. I mean. What was I was about to say. What about Moon Knight's design, though, guys? How that was. Yeah. Change? That was it. Actually, you're right, Joey. Um. So, sorry. Before that, as well. One of the great things about this game, as well, is that that opens a door to really the whole Marvel universe. Not. Not just some of the mobile games you see, just MCU, um, and it's very frustrating when it's cool you see Daredevil, like um, you know, in the Daredevil Netflix thing, but there's no like Moon Knight or there's no Dark Hawk. It's good to mm-hmm. see in Contest of Champions, it's it's actually open to to anything. So yeah, um, yeah, and absolutely. Next question was graphics of Moon Knight. So what do you guys think of the the Moon Knight aesthetic uh, in it? Why is he wearing white Crocs? Like, look at his design. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's wearing Crocs. white Crocs. Uh... Yeah. Well, off putting. Yeah. Like it's kind yeah. of based on the um the Ellis run a little bit. I mean, more yes. closely Houston and uh Finch run, but the the coloration on the shoes is from the Ellis almost. But it just looks like the dude woke up after having a couple too many natty high or uh, natty high lifes the mixer of miller high life and natty ice it's a cocktail of terror but he had a couple of those and then he just like woke up and said i guess i'm gonna fight crime now you're my white crop <laughs> deal with yeah. it <laughs> yeah I, I think that's um uh, that was kind of was more to my point as well about it than being like exactly but more like cartoony um though a lot of their feet look very kind of lumpy anyway um, <laughs> yeah, just lumpy. characters across the board 
Yeah, um, but you're, you're totally right. White Crocs, it's it's hilarious. I, I think the costume looks pretty cool. Um, uh, he uses again. I haven't got the I haven't got the character, um, but I have seen him. I think I fought against him a couple of times. He uses the bow staff a lot. Um, I'd like to see him. And correct me if I'm wrong. I'd like to see him use the truncheons a bit more because that that would be to me what he's more synonymous with, uh, similar yeah. to the Crescent darts. Um, he but has those. He, he does have does those. He? Yeah, it's like okay. his um, second attack, but they're okay. like kind of pink, reddish looking, and he, oh. he, oh, he yeah, like punches and then sh- like shoots back with them. It's like a reset. It's weird. It's it's okay. not like a move that he really uses. It's not like a projectile. It's like yeah. a second part of his punch. Oh, so that okay. sucks. That kind of like defeats the purpose. <laughs> yeah, a, that's a bit weird. Um, yeah, Rick. Uh, any thoughts on the aesthetic or, or, or how Moon Knight stacks up in this game compared to other games, actually, as well? How does he look? Does he look pretty cool? Minus the Crocs, I think he looks good. <laughs> his face looks cool. I like how he looks. His face looks, looks yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, his face is good. They've done that well. Um, does he say anything at the end? What's his What's his little stand at the end when he defeats someone? Does anyone know? Like, you know how they have their own little thing. Oh, uh, no. You know what? No, I wasn't playing with sound on because I cannot play sound on with on my phone when I play games. It's just like impossible. Uh, okay, Unless yeah, I have yeah. headphones, which I never really do like around the house. Like, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't be. Oh, well, I, I, th- I think I think actually anyway, I don't think any of the characters speak. So that's that's like uh, from just from memory. Yeah, they, they have like so, grunts and stuff, but they're grunts, know, yeah. just generic. Yeah. Yeah. And you I might think- probably grunts really hard. <laughs> good grunts did you so see his see super see. attack by the way moon knight super attack no, this? no what is it it's what is it's it? so dumb dude it's like uh, oh i hate it. it it's i think it's uh based off of vengeance of the moon knight because he takes mm-hmm. out these guns and oh, cool. like <laughs> shoots and it's just it looks like it's so transparently another character's animation that they're like i guess we'll just throw moon knight in there uh, no and way. it's basically Basically, it's Deathstroke's uh, super from Injustice <laughs> ported into uh, Contest of Champions. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it is literally Deathstroke in Contest of Champions. Yeah, I, it's for some, that's the crossover that never happened. But um, <laughs> it, he almost looks like a repurposed Gambit with his bow staff. You know, like he has a lot of similar animations. Also, his like first attack was really similar to Captain America's. I think it was copy mm-hmm. and paste, actually. Um, yeah. So he was. It seems like they took a lot of things from different fighters to try to make uh, um, Jack of all trades almost character, kind of like how they did him in uh, how they did him. They did him good. How they did him in uh, Ultimate Alliance three, because he has this uh, uh, lead yeah. effect that's super. That's supposed to be effect. I just don't really think it's that useful. So. Oh, there are these things. Yeah, look. Um, while we're here, let me. I'm just gonna pull up, uh, and it's in the show notes. There's a whole thing wiki on, on Moon Knight and his abilities. Um, and, that, and like, if anything, I've got to take my hats off to whoever came up with, with all this s- stuff about the powers and and the bleeding and the the critical hits and the, um, because there's a lot of thought obviously put into it. Uh, stuns, um, percentage chance of of like causing more bleed damage, regenerative. So Moon Knight, apparently um, his powers wax and wane com- um, depending on the, the phases of the moon in this game as mm-hmm. well. In real life, um, yeah, it cor- corresponds to that. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's, uh, I guess we'll have to wait to just the feedback, but um, apparently if you stack him up and, hit, and it's a full moon and all that, he can be pretty um, invincible, I think. Um, but I, I believe none of us have actually ever reached that. <laughs> um, no, Rick, I didn't. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, I haven't. no. Okay. Um, but uh, you know, there are uh, things that he can do that. Um, there's a in, yeah, an invincibility kind of um, for a, a certain amount of time that he's um, yeah, which a lot of characters have, where you actually you can't hit them. They, or well, they you hit them, but nothing happens to them. And he has that with the full moon. So um, there's a lot of oh, a lot of stuff here. Let me um, let me just pull up uh, special attacks, waxing crescents. Um, so Spectre's two crescent darts increase in size from the opponent's perspective. 
Uh, Divine Justice bearing the mantle of the Moon God Conchu. Spectre's Truncheon brings two-handed justice. That might be what you were referring to, Joey, what he does um, with that red pinky thing was that what you yeah about? Or was he, that or was he that connects crescent, with the punch and then throws his crescent darts yeah. and like it pushes him backward oh okay right mm. uh and there's and this is for three or four star um moon knights the knight of vengeance moon knights um of vengeance hands down some serious discipline with years of training years of and mountains of self-restraint uh, yeah it's, so as you get more stars you get more abilities yeah. and uh, additive effects like three star moon knight i don't believe has bleed effects but four star does or maybe okay. i have that backward but yeah either way that's just how it goes for the abilities yeah. in the game okay yeah and um and bleed immune so moon knight has that bleed immune depending on the waxing and waning so similar to mm. like colossus apparently um he can't be cut you know, if he's up against Wolverine or, or whatever, um, he doesn't take any of that damage. Um, and it says here, interesting from Wiki, Moon Knight is arguably the most powerful during the full moon, where he combines frequent critical hits, so whatever he hits, he gets maximum damage, uh, bleed effects, and stun. Um, enemies reliant on armor or physical resistance won't be able to stop the high amounts of direct damage. So, yeah, um, consistent with the character, full moon, you know, he's pretty good. Um, yeah, but... I mean, yeah. wasn't that retconned? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> after, it, was. it was. Uh, after Fist of Conchu, like uh... it was. Yeah, Fist of Conchu was the only time I think, and people keep on. Well, actually, no. At the very beginning, Werewolf by Night, um, he did have strength from from the Werewolf bite, the saliva. Oh, that's the right. Yeah, that's so right. He, um, but then the then it was changed to the Moon. Um, actually, it wasn't Conchu. It was the high priests um, high, yeah, who some, gave it to him, yeah. some spiritual yeah and then and then now we see currently he seems to have a sliver of conchu or something embedded in him um i think that's so a whack some... mechanic though in the context it's <laughs> it's really cool conceptually yeah. but in the context of the game that's kind of bunk because it's like oh this character is only usable and i don't know how to what extent you know i don't know mm. if he's actually really good when he's yeah. like this or if he's just like okay you know yeah so uh, that's kind of I, I hate mechanics like that in the actual practice of it but it is awesome that they took something from a little bit almost esoteric from the con from the comics mm -hmm. and then put it in the game but yeah. Uh, um, Rick, what, what are your thoughts on the powers that Moon Knight has or the skills that he has in the game? I wouldn't know. I haven't unlocked them yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, same you guys need to get well, back on that grind, man. Get yeah, back on that yeah. grind. I'm a bit of a scrub um, story. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's okay. Um, yeah, I, I think it sounds like he's on pretty much a lot of Struggle Street, Moon Knight, um, unless you do get you know more of a, a a moon a full moon phase on him um granted he's meant to be just a street level kind of guy i would love to see there have been because there was something in avengers alliance which was another mobile game which had since stopped um they tapped into um I, the identities of moon knight um in the power set which i found was quite interesting um not not jake lockley stephen grant mark specter which would have been cool but they had the aspects of conchu so you had the the um oh like the, the, the defender the defender yeah the pathfinder um you know those four those four ones um that's really cool that's awesome yeah. actually I, I think more yeah. games need to do that if when you have like moon knight has such an interesting whole like base of uh, powers and forms that he can have and there's a lot of mm -hmm. imagination there that just never gets tapped into you know yeah no absolutely yeah the fact um, that they didn't have mm -hmm. the airplane drop on somebody as a super disappoints me so much <laughs> me too man me too <laughs> we need that we need some we just need him crashing into the <laughs> into the building i mean what better way to take out a, a villain eh um just drop a Drew the super and then him. and after the the helicopter crashes frenchie comes out and it's like the most stereotypical awful french accent but uh, <laughs> he just made by a guy who's never heard french before is like Sacre bleu! and then that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what exactly. needs to happen you might as well yeah just have like pepe Le Pew just come out yeah <laughs> exactly i'll wait for ultra <laughs> contest of champions arcade edition 
for that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice little segue, um, I guess, to, to sound then and to music. Um, I found the music quite, I mean, obviously the music's quite repetitive. There's on a loop every time you, you play the same kind of thing. Um, very different from normal console games. But um, what, what did you make of, like, I guess, the sound effects? Joey, I'm just mindful that you said that you turn the sound off while you play. Um, but I'm sure you've heard it. Like, yeah, like the sound, all I have to say is just the sounds are a little satisfying. It's clear what they do. Mm-hmm. So that's good. That's yep. about all I have. Uh, ha- how about you, Rick? Sounds good despite it looping on occasions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no. It definitely does loop, especially if you kind of, you're a little idle like I do. You know, just oh, yeah. about it and then turn back on it. Oh, it's still on. <laughs> it's just kind of still going. Did um, you guys, when you first booted it up, was it the loudest thing you've ever heard? Because that's that what was. happened. I, I installed Get it and I played it. Get the shit out of me. Yeah, me too, man. It was at like one in the morning and I just, I opened the app and I'm just, it just goes, and my girlfriend just turns over and looks at me. She's like, why? (laughs) Why do you keep on doing this to me, Joey? (laughs) Every night. (laughs) So I blame you. By the way, Ray, you never took Uh your hat off. You said that your hat was coming off to somebody and it never came off. My hat was, what was it? I took my hat off. I said that on the previous uh, podcast. I'm being a butt. I, I was being uh, really uh, sorry because you're like I take my, I take my hat off uh, to this thing mm. and you, you just left it on. Yeah. So well, I know your true funnily, feelings. Funnily enough, we we're talking about Hawaii. It's a Hawaii hat. So Here those that have the video, yeah, <laughs> interesting. I was there for a wedding. It was a lot of fun. Nice. Um, Become a Patreon and you will see these things. Oh, thank you, Joey. <laughs> Loony <laughs> listeners. We do have a Patreon page. Please, please check it out in the show notes. Consider becoming a Patreon. A lot of bonus material. Uh, it will help us expand the show. Um, and so currently you have those that do have it uh, exclusive access to, to the video so they can see what we're talking about, what we're referring to. Um, hopefully down the track we might get a little bit more ooh la la, a bit more complicated with the videos. We'll see how we go. Um, but yeah, um, please consider that. Um, look, guys, I think it's probably about time, because you just reminded me again as well, Joey, uh, we might just go to a quick break. We'll continue with this discussion. Uh, we'll round off the rest of it and get our ratings before going into some Mooney missives. But before throwing to uh, some messages from our fellow podcasters, I wanted to do a bit of a mid, mid-ad, what, mid-roll ad for you. Um, and just also remind you, loony listeners, that we have now a sponsor, Hello Headphones. So with the special code ITK Moon Knight, you can get 10% off um, anything on their online store. Um, please check them out. Uh, we're very proud to have them as our sponsors. And what better time to um, advertise them than this episode where we are talking about video games. So they uh, pretty much do a lot of headphones and, and equipment for, for gamers. Um, and uh, yeah, look, if you want to pick it up for, for your gaming or for just listening to the podcast or like Joey, who's actually, I'm assuming using some gaming headphones, use it to come on the show. Um, it'll be all good. So yeah, that is hello headphones. Check them out in the show notes. Also, ITK Moon Knight for 10% off. Anyway, we'll take a quick break loonies. And when we come back, we will wrap up this chat about contest of champions. See you soon. Hey there. I'm sure you know about the Capes and Lunatics podcast, but have you heard about the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast? It's a fun home for classic and new reviews of just about everything. We have the Ultimate Spider Cast, where we cover everything Spider Man, the Quantum Zone, where we talk the classic Marvel character Quasar and do deep dives on the cosmic side of Marvel. We also have Comic Capers, where we cover everything old and new in comics. It could be anything, any company, any decade. And we also have our Media Mondays, where we cover some kind of TV show, be it a Arrowverse uh, current hit or our summer specials, where we do reviews of uh, classic episodes of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer spinoff Angel. So, if you're a fan of pop culture and media, you should really check it out. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. The Devil was once the most beautiful and favored of all the heavenly host. But once infected with the sin of pride, he was cast out of the Lord's sight into the farthest depths of hell. In his humiliation, 
The devil raged, "'Tis better to rule in hell than serve in heaven. My offspring, the October Pod, will one day conquer mankind and all the Lord's works. And so, reborn once each month at 1.38 a.m., by man's reckoning of time, the October Pod rises from its slumber, seeking what bold individualists it may devour. Edward October presents October Pod, a terrifying spook show. Available now on YouTube, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, and at OctoberPodVHS.com. October Pod, retro horror for bold individualists. Yes, welcome back, loony listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 133. You are with special guest Joey and Rick the Rick Ball. Joey the Mega Man. Uh, and we're here to finish off a discussion on Contest of Champions by, <laughs> by Moon Knight. That's the real Joey right there. Um, all right, guys, so we spoke, uh, you know, um, about graphics, sound, controls, uh, kind of value, I guess. Um, it's really, it's really difficult. Joey, you you actually, I oh, just mentioned that their difficulty. You, uh, it's very much like an algorithm, right? I mean, you do play, you play the game, blah 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 blah, and then all of a sudden it becomes pretty hard to beat some of these characters, right? They go boost. How do you find the difficulty of this? Is this like a, a wall compared to what is it? A, 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 imagine a gradual burn for console games, or how, how does it stack up? Oh, whoa, sorry, my mic just cut out. Yeah, it's, um, the difficulty here, again, I didn't really hit it because I didn't play f- far enough in Endgame where that's a thing. But, mm-hmm. I mean, I can see that a lot of things like special effects, like bleeding, I'll just use bleeding for an example, you know. Even mm-hmm. though bleeding doesn't seem to be very useful in this game, but, like, maybe for certain fights you want to have defense against that. And a big thing is kind of keeping your HP and stuff up, your character's healthy as you go through the stages and the gauntlets and whatever. So that's a big mm-hmm. thing to consider. But all this kind of stuff, I mean, yeah, you can play a little bit better. You can block and dodge and stuff. But that's, that cap is so small that the difficulty is... The, the, the difficulty the difficulty is really just... <laughs> uh, it, it really just depends on what character and what build and what items and stats that you have, which is all planning. So I wouldn't really mm-hmm. call the game difficult so it's hard to say there are a few mobile games that actually use reflexes and skill though and it makes sense because that's just how they're they're built and that's fine Mm -hmm. but yeah that's my take on it anyway yeah and what do you reckon rick um is it is it is there a bit of a i don't know is it the fact of as you joey was mentioning you make it as difficult as as you deem it's you know what i mean like if you don't decide to further yourself or progress yourself then it's just always going to be difficult um how do you find how do you find this kind of component of the game you like for free (laughs) don't buy anything and go and do well but you'll always hit that wall yep yeah but at the same time if you were to like buy stuff on it you can just continue on like it's nothing but you'll hit another wall and it just becomes this endless loop yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, sounds very. I'm currently, cool. yeah, I'm currently in that um, thing. I try to do the, you know, the main quests or whatever. You know, there's yeah, so many different aspects to this game. You can do side things. You can play one on one. You can, and I want to try to get through the, the, the main thread. Yeah, um, and um, I've actually I've actually hit a wall as well. Like you know how there are like six stories within the whole six chapters within the whole story mm-hmm. i've done five of them i'm up to the last one which has little thanos's face on there that's the one i'm on too uh, actually it's yeah fun. and it's like um and I've, I've stacked my team with my most powerful players and i've got like only about like eight thousand nine thousand whatever points it is and it says recommended like fourteen thousand. <laughs> so it's <laughs> like i'm not going to win this i've tried and yeah. uh it's just really hard um so as you say i mean it is a lot more difficult uh, it's very difficult, but if I if I worked at it, if I um, you know prepped my players more, but then again, it takes away from the actual main thing of fighting. You know, right. you spend a lot of time just building, 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 
and um right. and that can be a an annoying thing but um yeah totally with, with you nailed it like, that's honestly yeah. the whole point that's the, the whole thing about this game is that it, yeah. it shouldn't have been marketed and almost designed around being a fighter when the fighting mm. element of it is so tertiary to the actual gameplay you know yeah and yeah. so it, there's just so many other things that come into play like the first thing that you, you said it comes into your is your points or your stat total whatever and the only way yeah. to increase that is by just doing the dailies or yeah you know merging your characters and just grinding it yeah. out and that's just like that's not how i know street fighter it- is how mortal Kombat is yeah, but I mean, admittedly, though, it is the most marketable thing, obviously, to, to advertise yeah. a game. You've you got to show the fancy moves and the punchy punchy. Um, <laughs> no, Moon Knight's uh, guns, that Moon for some guns, reason yeah, that yeah. needs to be acknowledged. Some, I don't know. <laughs> Well done, good on, good on, uh, and and you know for Greg Hurwitz as well. I do, I do love. Do you like the Vengeance of the Moon Knight? I think it's a fun run. I like the. Uh, that's my least favorite run. Oh, ever. Right, yeah, right. I think even, I, the, even the Deadpool stuff in there. The Deadpool. Uh, yeah, I don't really care about yeah. it. Like uh, okay, it, yeah. it's it's they're cool interaction, but none of them like have any. It just they don't really stand out. They could it no. could have literally been any character at that point. Yeah. Yeah, I get what you mean. It's very much its own thing. Um, yeah, it doesn't speak to much more. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, look, I guess before we've got some just some feedback to go through, so I'm just going to wrap up with um, personal enjoyment. I guess final thoughts from both of you, and then we'll go give this a good old rating from either the vanilla rating or Connishu's Patterton rating system. <laughs> um, Rick, I'll I'll start with you just um to cap off on this then. Uh, unless of course there's anything else you guys want to talk about. Um, any final final thoughts on on this game, especially Moon Knight? Like you know, um, what you've used him, like how much of it, um, <laughs> what of him you've used? I guess yeah. Uh, I I kind of see where they are going with him in a way, mm-hmm. and I liked sort of what that approach was, but. I think it's similar to the problem that he had in Ultimate Alliance 3, where he mm. just wasn't really quite super unique. But I think they did the best they could with the basic style that they chose for him. Um, yeah. If anything, I, I want somebody who has played this game a lot and knows it really well to sell me yeah. on it. That's what mm. I want. I want somebody to... Because I played Final Fantasy Record Keeper, which is a mobile yeah. game and similar in mm-hmm. paradigm to this uh except it's like turn-based and i can sell somebody on that i think because i've i played it and i know it really mm-hmm. well but this game like it just didn't you know it just doesn't click with me and I'm, mm-hmm. there's gonna be something that i'm missing what am i missing what okay. is exciting someone tell me yes <laughs> that that's a that's a good um that's a good idea joey i'm actually yeah i think we'll get to it in the mooney missives uh feedback but i might have a little proposition there for one of the loonies, one or two of the loonies. Um, hold that thought. Rick, how about you? Any final thoughts? I think the best thing about this game is the roster. Yes. Mm, yes, yes, absolutely. Because when I see the that, roster, I yeah. see, when I see this roster, I see Omega Red, Dark Hawk. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I freak the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is good, isn't it? It's one of those things. I think it's one of those things. If you're a comic book fan and you, you you're playing a video game based on comic books, the number one thing you do love to look at is just like, do I see my character on screen? And who's in the know. game? Who's in? And what, who am yeah. I going to play? That's the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I was going to attempt an accent. <laughs> no, let's not. Let's not go down that rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Rick. Um, absolutely, Dark Hawk. Um, I'd love to see. I'm sure you'd love to see Sleepwalker, Rick. That would be good. I'd like to see Strong Guy. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, yeah. Bring oh, wow. Him. He's actually got a good power set. I reckon that would be really cool. You can imagine him taking damage and just getting bigger. <laughs> yeah, know? but he would. He still have Drax's model, just reskin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a, <laughs> just do Drax's end, model, just... but make the uh, chest bigger. Mm-hmm. Just, just, yeah, head. exactly. That would be so cool. And then he just takes damage, and then his, um, you know how you have three different levels of um, offense, just his third one, you can game. just have him release all his kinetic energy. And like, Wait, is yeah, Sauron in this? Any game, automatically 10 out of 10. <laughs> yep, there you go. Um, developers listening, put Strong Guy in there, 10 out of 10. He'll be... 
Um, Sauron as well. You mentioned Joey. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of like weird, dumb, obscure. That characters would be that cool. Like. I don't know I if don't he's in it he's... or not though. I got it. I hear me out. I got it. Yes. Devil dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that would be cool. There's there's so many, and the beauty of this game is that yes. they could do it because it's not beholden to just the MCU. So that's that's really cool. Um, yeah, great great call there, Rick. I think the roster is the best thing. Anything else? Anything other? Um, any other critiques of it that you'd like to just finish off? Um, with? Apart from some of the supers being copyrighted from uh, Street Fighter, which is another story mm. on itself. Mm-hmm. I think the game is fine. I may not like it. Doesn't mean you guys shouldn't like it in general. Mm. Have fun with it. It's no yes. Teppan, but it's good. <laughs> excellent. Uh, excellent. No, well, th- there you go. Um, and absolutely right as well. We should mention, I mean, of course, if you do love this game, I mean, we're not we're not scathing of it as well, but, you know, admittedly, we haven't got the XP behind it. Um, but... Uh, you know, uh, I think I think there could be room for improvement as well, uh, especially with what we discussed with um, the game's um, controls and, and such. Uh, but anyway, so let's go to the rating, Joey. Then I'll throw it to you. Um, out of this contest of champions, just I guess overall, but keeping in mind Moon Knight as well, what would you give this out of ten? Mm, um, I'd give it like a like a three and three point eight or a four out of ten. Okay. Uh, I don't quite hate it, but I mm-hmm. don't really think it's any good. I also, you know, to me, all it is is just, I just tap on stuff, see your dude mm-hmm. do things, do do cool things is about as, as far do. as I would, I would type it out as. But again, I, I didn't quite hit end game, so maybe that goes up a little bit. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, look, we'll be happy to keep it keep it on there. So um, Joey's given that a good waxing crescent, or if we were to do Connor shoes, it'd be something more of a, a telephone moon. <laughs> Only Connor shoe understands that, I guess. Um, <laughs> I get it, because, like, telephone... Uh, I don't oh, know, oh, okay, telephone. yeah, yeah, of course, of like course. Like this motion. Yes, 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 you're right, with the... Um, the, yeah, the crescent moon. I keep on thinking it's just a full moon, so I, I don't understand, but <laughs> I do now. Uh, Rick has just dropped off shortly while he comes back. I'm just going to give this... Um, uh, look, it has been ages, and I've only just recently picked it up again. I do enjoy it. Um, it does it does get very repetitive as well. There were like there were hours and hours where I'll be playing it, actually, um, back in the day, but um, it was literally... It was a bit of a, uh, a mind-numbing experience. It was just rinse and repeat kind of thing, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, but I was just determined to build, get more stuff. So um, there is that aspect of just being quite repetitive. I- I'd give it a, I'd give it a five straight down the middle, um, passable because it's in. Because to me, I, I do enjoy it. it. It's something that you can probably do also. Yeah, when you really don't want that much of a challenge, you just want to do it. And and if you want to slowly build stuff it can be quite fun to do um as well as collect your favorite characters so a straight a straight five half half the moon or half moon is um is how i'd call it oops i try to get rick back in here um okay yep and uh and finally rick as he returns he got zapped in by the internet and uh he's he's back out again rick are you with us bloody disney got to me Oh, yeah, they did. The mouse. Um, what, what would you give this, uh, Contest of Champions, overall? <laughs> I'd give it half a moon out of a uh, ten. Okay. So, yep, so five. Is that a five? I gave, yeah, five. Yeah, I gave that a five as well. So, yeah, I mean, just 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 passable, Rick, then, for you. Um, enough there to make it enjoyable, but not much more to, to make it stand out. Yeah, basically. But like I said, if Strong Guy's in the game... It'll be a ten out of ten, 10. instantly. <laughs> oh, geez, okay, it, it's a, it, uh, okay. It becomes a full moon. I uh, want well a strong guy with like T Hawk's move set, except he just gets buffer oh, and buffer yes. each time. Man, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think you just made. I think you just made Rick's day there, Joey. I did. <laughs> um, no, thank you so much, guys. Both of you, that is uh, is fantastic. Before. Um, we wrap up. We do have a couple of, uh, well, actually, a lot of feedback here from two loonies, and I'm hoping you guys can help us out. Um, 
Joey, would you be okay to read some? Or yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So, are you talking about like the from Billy Brooks here? Yeah. So Billy Brooks from um, from. How about you take the the whole Facebook group? So Billy sent a, a big message to to the group about the about the game. Yeah. So he says uh, he's got his army of Moon Knights maxed out here. So he's played this mm. a lot more than than we have, and he's he he's has. rocking that I'm, MK man. Six stars. He's waiting he's got, for six stars. He says. Yeah, he's got multiple Moon Knights. I can't believe that. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so it, that's what. Yeah, that's what happened. I got actually two Venoms that were like four stars. Oh, so okay. Oh yeah. Of course, I've got. So yeah, uh, I've got, I yeah. I think you need two five stars to merge to a six. But he's uh, he says that a lot of the champions in the game are kind of like imbalanced like some characters are really good some mm -hmm. only have specific like niche utility that only works against enemies with like a lot of health and uh, it's some only work as counters like maybe moon knight's a really good counter to i don't know thanos but crappy in every yeah. other regard so it's like you have to kind of pull stuff out of your bag which is kind of mm -hmm. what i was guessing would be the case here so um yeah. and he says blade alongside with ghost rider activates danger sense and it makes all villain abilities not work well so that seems really good in certain uh, circumstances that's pretty cool yeah. yeah and usually in these mobile games you want to have there's like four or five things that each team needs so that seems like mm -hmm. uh, one of the like a pantheon of what you want so and then he says like magic magic with a k uh can easily mm -hmm. control like a power bar and avoid special attacks from enemies and uh, Hyperion can dodge, you know, things like that. And yep. while these champions have their abilities, Moon Knight kind of just punches and like kind of like what I was saying, he inflicts, yeah. but doesn't inflict very much damage. And then the full moon thing, it, it seems, I don't know, it just doesn't really seem like it's worth the effort is basically what I'm, mm. but at the same time, it seems like when he gets that, maybe in pvp in the 1v1 against other people it could be mm -hmm. really annoying because you just get stun locked by some weird yeah. time-based mechanic so i can see a lot of people who play this game seriously getting kind of irate about that and mm -hmm. what else does he say um he's just he, basically uh billy is saying that he just kind of punches and yeah. that's it <laughs> it's really boring and straightforward yeah so. Which is, it sounds it sounds a little disappointing, um, but I mean as we mentioned, there's a little bit more of the there's some crescent dart gun action there, Joey. Um, so yeah, but I mean thank you Billy so much for those comments as well. Um, very interesting to hear from a very seasoned player, um, Rick. Uh, oh look, I'll just take so Billy also mentioned something on the Facebook page. And uh, he goes, in this game, he's a terrible champion compared to many others, but I maxed him out anyway. Um, he has faith that Kabam will buff him. Um, let's hope they do, or somehow. Um, I think maybe after the TV show, possibly. Who knows? Because he's going to get a lot of attention after that. So um, stick with it, Billy, uh, and you never know what might happen. If the game is still around by then, I'm sure it is. It's been going on for ages. Uh, Rick, are you, are you up for reading... Uh, some comments from Jared, uh, Looney Jared. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, basically he's saying that he has like three maxed out and he's mostly been full of specials considering his heavy and light attacks are equivalent to a paper, na paper napkin. <laughs> Poor <Yeah>. dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, even with his buffs, he's only like viable against like three or low fours. That's pretty disappointing. Yeah. 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 I have read this somewhere else that a uh, Kabam did him did him super dirty. Yep. But but his experience has been what's it called? It's, it's basically like a hog of a game. Uh huh. And he's already got him, and he's already got like tons of those on his Xbox. Mm hmm. Also, he says even with light and heavy attacks and a stacked bleed debuff, it will look it will knock like a quarter of less of health. Oh wow! And that's why yeah. you spam either your first ability. It would either stack already stacked bleeding debuffs or start again when time ended, or your second ability if you were lucky. Mm -hmm. His third ability is essentially the moment the green diamond fish was punching SpongeBob. <laughs> Deep cut. I don't, I don't get, I don't get that <laughs> reference, but. <laughs> 
It's a good gif. <laughs> Other champs would, would be a damaged sponge for MK. Efficiently <laughs> giving you less downtime and forcing you to continue your assault without allowing you to block and build up your first special. MK's bleed debuff is your saving grace if you dupe them or else you're full on attack like a bot. Yeah. And, and uh, from Jared's yeah. own words, his other passive, based off the lunar rotation of the freaking moon, is all right, I suppose. <laughs> okay. So not not the uh, again. So that last comment, <laughs> not not the uh, the greatest uh, praise. All right, I guess. Um, quote unquote, Jared. No, but thank you, Jared, for that. Uh, again, Jared seems to be quite a seasoned player. And Joey, just going back to your point. Um, I would like, actually like to throw it out to, I'd like to invite Billy or Jared, if you guys are listening now, I'd love to have you on the show, go one-on-one against Joey, <laughs> pitching Contest of Champions. Joey, you can pitch, what was that Sell the one me. that you pitched? Uh, record, yeah. Final Fantasy Record Keeper. I don't know if I could pitch oh, that anymore, though, because I don't, I've, I have a thing with mobile games now. I'm over it. Oh, okay. So you can't be swayed, no matter <laughs> I what. I can't be swayed, no. You cannot buy me. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, 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 you know, I still throw it out there. Um, I'd love to hear from um, loonies that love, you know, that obviously love playing this game, and there's plenty to love about it. So please also, again, despite our scores, um, they're exactly just our scores. Uh, if you do enjoy it, please enjoy it as much as you can. Um there's certainly a lot of entertainment there. Anyway, guys, that pretty much, I guess, wraps it up. Thank you so much, Joey, for uh, for coming on. It's uh, a lot more of a, a decent time for you this time round. Yeah, um, it's not uh, four in the morning again, but I'm really mm. happy to be here, man. Thank you for inviting me. It's always... Oh, fantastic. And always always happy to have you on. Uh, I, I know you mentioned last time. I think you did mention last time as well. We should get we'll get you on for a comic book review as well. Um, if you're keen, just to yeah. talk about one of the one of the issues. I do um, like comic books. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Believe it or yeah, not, that's yeah. yeah. Something that's I've crazy. been to. You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rick, thank you so much for for jumping on as well. It's been a pleasure. There are a few gremlins here and there, but you know, um, for the most part, it's been really cool. It's always great to hear your thoughts and um, hear that you had such a good time in Japan. Oh, thank you very much, man. Yeah. Uh, again, well, also as well. Congrats on the engagement. Sorry, I forgot to oh, mention that. Oh yes. Huge congrats oh, thanks, as well, guys. Rick. Yes. That's a big so, boy. Uh, Rick Ball has has become engaged. Whoever wants, to- um, sorry, whoever wants to crash the ring wedding in the socks. Can- <laughs> Always hide the engagement rings in the socks because they will never look there. Oh, dude, okay, that's, right. you know what? That's, that's in my plan, yeah. and I I was kind of wondering what to do with it when I got yeah. it. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> that's really okay, good. In the socks works <laughs> like it works like heaven, man. <laughs> they don't touch the socks, don't they? So, Close. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you once again. Looney's next phase, we are looking at a waning crescent. And funnily enough, we will be looking at a Bender's comic. So uh, we're returning to our modern run reviews. It's going to be a Lunar Pick review. It is Moon Knight, Volume 6, Issue 5, or up to Issue 5. It's been a while, but um, we are, um, you know, I've already lost the word. We're subject to whatever the phase of the moon is, so um, it's it's not our fault. Waning Crescent is coming up next, so um, join us for that. Also, as well, and as always, we are part of The Collective. Go check out all these other cool, cool, cool podcast shows. Um, we've all kind of banded together. We just like sharing ideas. You might see some of us cross over into other podcasts as well. So the likes of Capes and Lunatics, um, they include podcasts including Deadpool, Spider-Man podcasts, Quasar podcasts. Also, um, the likes of We Are Venomaniacs, a Venom podcast. Uh, there's also Inner Demons, a Ghost Rider podcast. Plenty of podcasts for all your comic book needs. Check them out. It's all in the show notes. Um, and we're, we're very proud to be associated with them. Uh, also, you can find us on email, itkmoonight at gmail.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Discord. We are on Get Vocal right now. Um, 
And uh, we also have a Patreon, as mentioned, and we're on Podchaser as well. So leave us a review there on Podchaser if you can. Um, it's, it's a pretty cool new database that kind of links all podcasts together. Uh, I think that about wraps it. Um, a huge thanks once again to you guys. Keep playing. Keep working on those accents. <laughs> and uh, as always, make on you watch over the denizens of the night. See? Oh, I thought you were about to do something. See you later, Governor. You say... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to go out like that. <laughs> I can't go out like that. Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.